How's it going YouTube? This is Drizzle again. I'm doing a video on an early launch MMORPG called Edengrad. It's made by, I believe they're Polish developers, and uh, it's pretty early access, but it's kind of a survival style. It's not like a Rust in that, uh, like Rust isn't really an MMO, it's kind of like a separate servers where people have, you know, maybe like 40 players or something. This is supports more players than that from what I understand, but it's, uh, like, a, again, it's a survival style game. I'm gonna go ahead and load it up here real quick. from the truck because it's kind of noisy but uh, you see the graphics in the game aren't too bad I'm not playing it on max settings right now uh, I think it's made with the unity engine and it really uh, it's not well optimized yet so the frame rate uh, isn't going to be too hot um, it doesn't work with SLI yet either so this is a single 1080 Ti that it's running on but uh, it runs okay it's playable and um, there are some maps in the game like that there are a lot of forests and trees and so forth and uh, those maps are pretty much unplayable unless you lower the settings down pretty pretty low or at least get it down to like 1080p and then set things on like medium it's just really badly optimized there's a bunch of grass and other uh, and like all the tree branches and leaves and so forth that uh, just will wreck your system because the game is just not well optimized yet but I'm sure they're working on it but uh, I'll show you around a little bit some of the things you can do So the combat is so-so. It's uh, as you can see, it's just like you kind of, it's all real time. It's not, uh, it's not like Final Fantasy or anything. Like it's not, uh, it, you can dodge. You know, it's all skill based. So you can move out of the way of things and that kind of thing. It's not like, uh, like dice roll systems like most MMOs use. So in that respect, it does make uh, the combat a little bit more skill intensive, which is kind of nice. I don't like games um, like, for instance, like World of Warcraft or Lord of the Rings Online, for example, where um, the game just kind of decides for you if you get hit. It doesn't actually matter if you physically move out of the way of stuff. Uh, it just does a hit percentage and then you get hit or you don't get hit. But uh, there's a lot of crafting in this game. And you can see this is, uh, I think this is tin. see uh, it kind of breaks as you wail on it. Uh, this game does use, I believe uh, it uses N NVIDIA PhysX, which is cool. So things fall kind of realistically like that. But uh, it's still pretty poorly implemented yet. And that's the only thing I've seen that really utilizes it. That and uh, you can cut down trees and they actually fall over in a more or less proper manner, which is kind of cool. Uh, but the game is clearly kind of this post-apocalyptic environment. Um, I believe it's supposed to be after some kind of a, you know, a nuclear fallout situation, kind of like the Fallout game series. And uh, it appears to be, you know, again, the point I think is both mostly just survival, uh, crafting, and I know there's PvP because I did get killed on a different map from some guy who was way higher level than me. Uh, but you can build towns. Like I've seen uh, some cities and so forth, like you can build player-run cities, which is kind of an interesting feature. But um, the downside is right now, the maps aren't very large, or they haven't added enough uh, places for players to own their own homes. So as it stands, like all that stuff's been bought out by players. This is early access though, so they're going to wipe the servers a bunch of times, and I know that they're going to add more places for, for players to build housing, so it won't... Uh, be like this when they actually launch the game, but uh, for the moment I can't really build anything. But you can still work on the skills to do it uh, for later. So you've got your inventory, um, you've got 
you know, your different weapons. Uh, you have a carrying capacity, you know, like a burden limit, where I can carry 520 pounds, and you can increase that as you level up. I'm uh, between level 9 and 10. I'm kind of not really playing this game heavily at the moment because there's not a lot left for me to do. Uh, the quests, some of the quests are broken still. In fact, a lot of them are. So you can't uh, progress through some of the, the different quests that, uh, that I've acquired. Or some of them are too high a level for me. And leveling uh, in this game is quite the grind. Like, uh, it takes quite a while just to get to like level 6 or 7-ish. So 9 is pretty good. The highest guy I saw was 14 or 15. And uh, that was the dude that killed me. He killed me in like two hits. And so leveling after a certain point is very grindy. Uh, but you can you get experience from a lot of things though, so it's not like you just have to run on kill stuff um, to level up. In fact, uh, killing things at least initially is not a good way to level. Um, doing the different crafting, uh, like mining or building things, like uh, different weapons uh, with blacksmithing, um, building like shelters and so forth with the self or the the scavenging skill. All those give you experience. So you can level up without actually doing any combat if you want to. I think probably about half my experience or more is sort of non-combat related stuff. Now when you get to a little bit higher level like I'm at now, you can go to some of the maps that have, um, there are bandit NPCs to fight against and um, other things that are a little bit higher level. And anything higher level than you gives decent experience. So I might get like 40 or 50 experience a piece from killing bandits. And that can add up pretty quick. Although they, uh, like if you try to fight more than one or two of them at a time, it could be a pain in the ass. But uh, anyways, you can see I've got quite the collection of weapons that I found. I've got some firearms, I've got a longbow, some different knives, axes, different things like that. Uh, then you've got your armor. Uh, if you start off with just some basic, kind of like a uniform or clothes that they give you from the shelter behind me there, you can see uh, back here. Um, you come out of that with, like, again, just like a shelter uniform on. It doesn't really offer much protection. Uh, I have way better protection now than I started with. The robber armor seems to be the best that I've found so far. There is, like, police riot gear and so forth you can get, but I haven't uh, figured out where to loot it yet. You can craft it, but some of the items required to craft it you can't actually get yet, so it's like they've put an item in the, in the crafting tree that can't really be made, which is sort of stupid. But, uh, like I say, there are... There is the, uh, the armor tab, uh, you have materials, like anything that you've picked up to build with, like cloth scraps, uh, bricks, coal, coal is used in mining crafting, uh, like making different uh, like iron ingots and so forth. You got all your different foods and so forth in here, well I should say uh, vegetables and stuff, because you can plant the corn later and do farming if you have your own house with farmland, but I don't have again anything like that. But uh, that sort of random stuff is in here. A lot of it's completely useless right now, and you just end up throwing a lot of it out because it doesn't serve a purpose. And it's like, again, you get to the point where you can't carry anymore, and you need to throw things away. Uh, quest items over here. Uh, I have these be this because this quest is broken, and it won't let me turn it in. Uh, this, I just happen to find another one of the same item, and it still puts it in the quest item slot. I should just throw it away, but it doesn't weigh anything, really, so I don't care. Then you have all your different foods and uh, self-healing items. So you may have noticed there's no hot bar in this game, which is really kind of dumb. Hopefully they'll add that eventually, because right now, like even in the middle of a fight, you have to uh, like open up your inventory, click on the type of healing item you want to use, and click Use to actually heal yourself in the middle of a battle. It's a very cumbersome method to, to do it. It makes it so you... Uh, I mean, I haven't died too much in fights, but it's still a pain in the ass. But you got all your different food items in here. Uh, water, you know, because this is my food meter and my water meter. As you can see, I'm starting to get a little bit hungry and thirsty, so I'll go ahead and uh, eat something I think I've got. Yeah, you can get soups, and they do both food and, as you can see, I got most of my hunger fixed, and uh, it did affect my thirst level. And then I'll go ahead and drink a little bit of my water. Which should finish me off. Yep. The gas mask that I'm wearing actually matters uh, in certain areas. There's like uh, areas that are irradiated and or affected by uh, like poison gases, like swamps and so forth. So the gas mask is required, and it uh, everything has a durability rating, and it will eventually break uh, from being used in those situations, and you have to get it repaired. There's this guy named Bob, kind of like Bob the Builders, which is sort of funny, but. 
Um, the only way to repair things right now in the game is to pay Bob to fix your stuff. But it's only two dollars an item, as you can see. I've got like, you know, almost twenty six hundred dollars. I'll never run out of money from having to repair stuff. Money is really easy to get in this game after a little bit. You get wallets off of the guys you kill, and they always have like ten, twenty bucks in them. And then uh, the quests all pay anywhere from like a hundred to like five hundred dollars. So it's really easy uh, after just a few levels to have so much money that repairs are not an issue anymore. Uh, building objects are made either with uh, carpentry, like if you were building a house you could build floors or walls or ceilings, stairs, windows, that kind of stuff. And then uh, the salvage skill, or not salvage, uh, scavenging skill lets you build the uh, campfires which you can cook on those. And then uh, the shelter, like your character periodically will actually need sleep and you'll start losing more and more stamina and so you have to have him, uh, like I say, you have to build a shelter and sleep in it periodically to get your stamina back up, uh, but you can recover it after you use it, so it doesn't, you know, you don't have to really use more than one of them. There's another player you can see, he's running around, uh, he's just got the standard uniform on, he probably just started playing. If you saw that when I swung at him, like he just kind of disappeared and moved to the right. That's a problem in this game right now with the combat. It's like the monsters sort of just lag around you sometimes, and you know you'll hit them, and they'll just suddenly be behind you or something crazy. It's kind of irritating, irritation. But I will. Uh, some of the stuff in this game is like right now because it's early access is just hilariously bad. So let me go ahead and show you something like I'm talking about. Like the dialogue is awful. Not so bad, um, like the stuff that's written on the screen is usually reasonably well written and considering they're translating everything from Polish to English, it's, you know, they've done a pretty good job with that, but like some of the audio stuff you'll hear them saying, they just repeat themselves over and over again with the corniest shit, so I'm going to run through here, you can hear some of the NPCs talking here in a second, it'll be, it's, I think it's funny. They keep going, it's always the same, it's always the same. So you can hear them just, they, they keep repeating themselves. It's, I think it's hilarious, but... Actually, I mean, it gets annoying in like five seconds. When you um, go fight bandits, it's the same kind of stuff. It's even dumber, though. They keep saying stuff about how they haven't killed anybody lately. And, I mean, like, you'll hear five of them just echo the same dialogue line over and over and over again. Definitely something I need to work on in this game, but just something I think is amusing. Uh, I'll show you kind of the crafting system real quick. I don't know that I have a lot to craft with right now, but I can kind of show you how it works. So you've got uh, tailoring stations, which uh, you can use for obviously making uh, anything out of cloth or any of the cloth based armors. Uh, I should be able to make some of this, let's see. You can see it uses stamina every time you craft something, so you can't just sit there and like spam it. Um, that's probably intentional by the devs so people don't macro things. You can see I'm getting two experience each time I make a piece of cloth. So even though that's not much, if you make a bunch of it, that kind of adds up. And that's a really basic thing to make. You can get a lot more from some of the other stuff. Like, uh, let's see. So I can make arrows, which are... The ammo in this game is so not economical to make. It's like, there's no point in even trying to be a ranged character. They have skill trees for uh, guns and bows and arrows, and it's absolutely pointless right now to do any of it. Nobody I've seen in the game is using firearms, except for maybe like against a boss or something, just for the fun of it, just to use up the ammo to get it out of your bag. But uh, ammo is really, really uncommon. 
Um, you do get it from the bandit guys. If they have guns and you kill them, they can drop ammo, but um, it's only like a couple rounds at a time, and it isn't particularly high damage, so you know, you, you're better off just being well trained in a melee skill at the moment. Um, it takes a whole bar of iron, two branches, and two feathers to make one arrow. It, it, it's asinine. And making an iron bar takes like five iron ore and a couple coal. Uh, getting feathers, you have to go kill birds to get feathers, which aren't difficult, but again, it's like you've got to do a bunch of collecting just to make one arrow. Uh, and it would take several arrows to kill, you know, anything re reasonably strong. Uh, just not really worth doing. I don't know what the Boda bag does. I made one. I have no idea what it does. Uh, doesn't appear to do anything. You can make bow strings so you can craft your own longbow. Uh, here's where you make your campfires. Like I guess I don't have the mats to make one. Uh, strings to make the bow string, which you make out of hemp. And you can craft your own shelters, like I said before, out of tree branches, which I don't have enough mats for. You can make your own guns, but I don't have the skill tree uh, leveled up really at all. It's not, again, really worth doing right now. Some of the stuff to do it you can't even get yet. And uh, again, because guns are kind of a worthless proposition because of the ammo issue, um, not really worth doing in my opinion. Uh, mining tree lets you make different mining implements, make iron bars. Uh, as you learn the skill tree, you can uh, learn to make other kinds of bars like steel, um, tin, aluminum. I think you could make titanium bars. I don't know what they're all used in. I'm sure there's a lot of stuff they plan to add to the crafting tree that you'll be able to make later on, but right now you're kind of limited. Uh, blacksmithing is how you make all your different hand weapons. I can make maces and axes pretty much at the moment. Carpentry lets you make planks and the different workstations yourself. So if you have your own house, you can build like a tailoring station of your own. You don't have to, uh, you know, always come here to use the one that belongs to these NPCs. Chemistry, I don't see any method by which to level that up yet. Uh, there's this engineering skill tree that's like locksmithing uh, and lock picking, and you can't do anything in that yet. So that's all kind of out. Building obviously lets you build walls, floors, things like that. Farming, uh, I'm not really sure how it works in the sake of crafting, but it does let you. Uh, you can train that up and, and plant different types of crops if you have the farmland to do it on. Uh, let's go up and look at one of these other uh, crafting stations. So this is a blacksmith's workshop where you can obviously actually go ahead and make your weapons if you have the materials to do it. And then we've got uh, behind me there you can see that's a building workstation the one with the paint on it, and behind it back there with the saw is a, a, a carpenter's workstation where you can plane out boards if you've been cutting down trees. They've got a shooting range in here where you, again you can go and practice shooting, but like I said right now the whole bullet situation is so bad that uh, it's not worth wasting them on, on shooting practice. Uh, it's pretty easy to shoot in this game anyway. Also something interesting, you can go ahead and play first or third person, which is kind of a nice bonus. Uh, let's go look at some other stuff around here real quick. One nice thing that they finally fixed is that uh, there was this glitch in the game where if you would try to look at an object that you couldn't interact with, with a little interact but bubble would pop up on it anyway, your character would get fixated on it, and then you wouldn't be able to use anything else until you logged out and back in, and they just fixed that here at the last update. So they're definitely fixing some of the in-game problems. He just got stuck at the table, it was funny. Uh, there's a cook over there, she gives you different quests, the one with the question mark over her head. I do have a quest here right now that's also broken where I'm supposed to put some kind of powder in the food that the guards are eating to knock a bunch of them out. And, uh, like, there's nothing to interact with. I think the quest is broken, but again, a lot of quests are broken in this game. But basically, this is, um, just the, like the place where you start off and get a few early quests here. Um, talk to some NPCs, get a few different basic items, 
that kind of stuff, but there's not a whole lot else to it. Uh, the combat, like I kind of showed you against the scorpions, is still pretty basic. Uh, you can block, but it doesn't really doesn't really do anything. It's like it slightly reduces the damage, but it's hardly even worth attempting to do it. There are uh, other maps to go to, so I guess I can show you one of those real quick, um, just to kind of give you an idea what the different environments are like. They're not all desert like this. I'll show you uh, Bob the Builder, the guy out with a truck. He, uh, like I say, he repairs stuff for you if you need it. As far as the survival aspect of this game goes, like finding food and water initially, it's really easy uh, to stay alive until you've collected some stuff. You can go up to almost any tree and search it for fruit, and a lot of them will have it, and like that works as basic uh, sustenance recovery until you can get to the point where you can cook a few things. And uh, water is in barrels and so forth, which is really easy to get. You can find items a lot of times in trash dumpsters like that and in, um, what you want to call it, like crates and things like that as well. So he just fixed all my shit. It's a good idea in this game to carry like a duplicate of a hand, like if you, you know, whatever weapon type you ch decide to go with, it's good to carry at least two of that weapon because uh, if you're out fighting stuff for a while, the durability on them, I, I mean, they last for a while, but if it breaks the middle of the fight or something, or, you know, if, if breaking it means you have to call them all the way back here to repair it, it's better to have like two or three decent weapons on you at any given time so you're not constantly having to come back and repair things. I'll show you some other weapons really quick. Like, I've trained my guy in one-handed melee, so I've got a two-handed axe because I looted it off a, a boss, but I'm not actually using it for the most part. I have uh, my reinforced hatchet, which is a one-handed weapon, and then uh, my mace that I'm using uh, does pretty good. It does 15 to 22 damage versus the 12 to 17 of the hand axe, but the axe is a little bit faster, but not much. Uh, I have, this is another good weapon, is my black machete. They seem to have like different color coatings for stuff which seems to relate directly to how good they are. So like you can see the switchblade uh, parentheses camo in my backpack. It says uh, like if it's a standard item it'll just be a switchblade. Then there's camo. There's like rusted items which are worse actually. But then there's uh, and like blunted items which are, are bad. But then you can get uh, like I say this camo one would be better than a regular switchblade. And then I think the black items, like again, like my machete, are the best items that I found so far. If they if they say black on them, they tend to be pretty good. You can kind of see that this machete has like saw blades of some kind welded onto it, which is pretty neat. So this is one of the maps where uh, I think player housing exists. I may get my ass kicked for coming here, I don't know if there'll be players here or not.
without running around too far you can see there are these any of these icons indicate that uh, players live there and have already built their own structures there and uh, I wonder if uh, what if this one can be bought up? Let's go see if I can go out there. I don't know what housing costs either, so I have no idea if it's something I could even afford or not yet, but it would be interesting if I could. Alright, I guess this big generator thing over here is what was on the map. I thought maybe it was a, a housing plot, but nope. I'll try to uh, run up to one of these houses, I guess. I don't think dying actually has any real penalty anyway. Maybe we can see what uh, someone's town looks like. I don't know how well developed any of them really are. There's this weird glitch too in the game where, as you can see, like when I was in that fight, the camera, for some reason, kind of moved me to the left side of the screen. It's sort of bizarre. Alright, there you can see uh, player-owned structures. I believe you can do wood, stone, and metal, kind of like rust again. So yeah, of course it's locked and it won't let me unlock it or do anything with it, of course, because I'm not the owner. Um, so they need to make it eventually so other players can get access to stuff. They need to make things decay, in my opinion. So if you don't interact with it in like a week, maybe it collapses or something. A lot of games do that where it uh, incentivizes people to log in, otherwise they lose you know, their housing. Aluminum usually gives pretty good experience to, to uh, dig it up. Iron gives like 10 to 25. Coal gives like 10. Uh, let's see what I get. It's 45 experience just for doing that. So I mean, you know, like obviously I'm not going to find aluminum nodes everywhere and then I'm carrying all that shit around. Although aluminum right now doesn't serve any purpose. So you just basically would chuck it on the ground after getting it. So not really a, a useful material but you do get decent experience for picking it up so you know whenever you see a node like that it doesn't hurt to go ahead and uh, mine it even if you don't have any use for the material just throw it back out but gain the experience for having done it but anyways uh, not a whole lot to this game right now there's not a lot of players even playing it I don't know that I would recommend people buy it yet maybe give it a little time to they develop it more and hopefully there'll be more players it is fun uh, to some degree, at least initially when you're learning how to play it and uh, you're kind of exploring around and gaining a few levels. Uh, there is a pretty wide number of uh, environments to the game, so from that perspective it's kind of kind of decent and enjoyable. But again, not a ton to do yet in it other than to level, kind of level grind and uh, just kind of work on your crafting skills. Let me show the crafting skill tree real quick before I 
end of the video here. So I kind of mentioned these earlier when we were looking at the crafting uh, benches, but this is the actual skill tree. So like as you work on blacksmithing, you'll level up blacksmithing and you can put skill points into different things that you want to learn how to make. So I've learned like these different hatchets and these different maces. And like to get to this one, I had to learn this one, this one, and then this one. And on my previous character I played, who accidentally got deleted, I had uh, gotten out to the point where I was making uh, simple fireman axes, and I trained myself in this combat tree of uh, two-handed melee, and uh, like I could do a ton of damage with that axe. Like I was one-shotting bandits with it. Or maybe two shotting, but like the armor piercing ability of it is like 70 armor piercing, which is at least twice as good as any of the one handed stuff that I've got. So I could just walk up and, and basically, you know, crack the skull off of some, some bandit and no problem at all. Um, but they don't swing very fast, so that's the downside to them. But, anyways, uh, other skill trees again, like I think I mentioned, engineering, there's no way to level it. Like you, you, you start with lock picking. And it says to improve it, you know, you need to work on lock picking. Well, there's nothing to lock pick in the whole game, so uh, it doesn't let you build it, so you can't get any points to put these other abilities. Otherwise, uh, for some reason, you can make electronics with engineering, and you use electronics towards other uh, craftables. Like, for some reason, they're used in, I think, some of the police armor, which is strange, but whatever. Uh, forestry improves, like, how fast you can cut down trees. Uh, and gather logs and wood and so forth. As you can see I max that out pretty quickly. It doesn't take long to do that. Mining is quite the long set of skill trees. Uh, start off with like coal mining, work your way down into copper. Copper isn't used in anything so I didn't develop it. Then you can jump down. Uh, salt mining is worthless right now again but I'm sure at some point it won't be. Iron mining is the most useful right now because pretty much anything you can craft for weapons or tools use iron. Uh, there's tin, Aluminum, chrome, titanium, uh, mercury, nickel, potassium, silver, gold, and lead. And none of these have any use right now. And then uh, over here I was developing, uh, you learn how to make better pickaxes so you can mine faster. And uh, the next one takes three skill points to learn, but you need metal scraps and steel bars to make it and right now there's no way to make metal scraps you can uh, find them in boxes so I collect them when I get them but you can't make them and then uh, the steel bars again I would have to learn uh, put three points into this tree to make that so I'm just kind of I pick picking them up as I find them as well they're they're occasionally in, in like loot boxes so you don't really have to make them first aid lets you make different things like bandages and painkillers and so forth for yourself, so that's pretty handy. Uh, gunsmithing, again, is making guns, but right now, guns are kind of pointless. Uh, survival, lets you make bows and arrows, uh, your little sleeping shelters, your campfires. Uh, you can apparently make torches, but I haven't gotten to the point where I've learned that yet. Tailoring has all the way out to um, heavy leather armor. And then uh, in blacksmithing, go back over here, we've got like police armor and basic combat armor, but to make it you need the electronics, which as I said from engineering you can't you can't do. So unless you just randomly loot it, you're not gonna make it. And then uh, you need coal and steel bars. Plus it takes eight points uh, skill points to just unlock that basic level one. Then you've got combat armor, reinforced combat armor, etc etc. But like I said, basically right now that's all there is to the game. Hopefully there'll be more to it soon. They do seem to update the game at least a few times a month, and uh, there's usually some people on their discussion page, but not a ton yet. So uh, I would hold off and advise that people uh, wait and see if the game is improved before buying it. You know, look at some of the reviews, go to the discussion page on Steam, and see uh, how recent some of the comments are to see if anybody's really involved in the game or not. Because most of the time when I log on, there might be like 10 people playing it on this server. That's not very many. Uh, but that said, this has been Druzel. I appreciate people watching the channel. Uh, if you don't mind giving me a thumbs up, that would be great. And if uh, you really like the channel, kind of go ahead and click that subscribe button because uh, I'm trying to build this thing up here. But I appreciate people watching, and I'll make sure to do another video soon. Have a great one. Bye.